gonna tell you as much as I can about it because the entire time that I'm in Korea, I'm usually spending most of the hours that I'm not eating or drinking or sleeping climbing. <laughs> and all of my friends are from climbing so I feel like I, I have a little bit of uh, knowledge about what the climbing culture and climbing in general is like in Korea. In this video, I'm going to be going over uh, pricing, I'm going to be going over style, I'm going to be going over culture and what's different about the climbing gyms themselves, like the facilities. I will also be having multiple gym tours, I think nine, uh, from my most recent trip to Korea. First, let's talk about my climbing experience. I think it's helpful to know what someone's background is and where they're coming from when they talk about a different experience that they had in a different country or culture. So I started climbing in 2016. This was right at the end of my track season, my last track season in senior year of high school. And after my last track season, I was just like, eh, do I really want to keep running? <laughs> and I tried to, but it's just like not that fun unless I'm gabbing away with my friends on an eight miler <laughs> in like 80 degree heat. So I started climbing. I happened to find climbing through a field trip that this club that I was part of went on. Um, and this was like back when Solid Rocks was a thing in San Diego. I don't know if anyone is from San Diego or remembers those days, but this is before Vertical Hold bought out all the Solid Rock gyms. I tried out climbing at Solid Rock. I really liked it. I got a membership at Vertical Hold because my friends were like, you won't actually do it. Like it's just something that you thought was interesting. And when they did that, I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then I bought like the La Sportiva tarantulases and like got a membership and at that point I'm $200 deep into climbing and now it's just like I have to do it. <laughs> but I got addicted, luckily, as I do with most of my hobbies. <laughs> After that, I basically never stopped climbing unless it was for exams or injuries. I climbed at bridges throughout college, throughout like my first three years of college. I worked at bridges for a short period of time, um, if you guys know. Uh, the gyms up in the Bay Area. I went to school at Berkeley and then I would like take my bike to the BART and then bike two bridges and it was just like such a hassle honestly so I didn't climb very consistently. And then in junior year I decided to switch over to, to Touchstone Ironworks because it's a lot easier to access when I'm just like biking. It's like a straight shot downhill to Ironworks and then I just take the bus back <laughs> because I'm too lazy to bike uphill. But yeah so that's my climbing experience. Most of the climbing problems, as far as I can remember, were very static, and very crimpy, very emulating the outdoor style problems, and there would always be, well not even always, this was more like a in the past couple of years development where there was a comp wall that like there you would find the dynamic problems that you would commonly see at competitions where it's like you've got dymo, dynos, you've got coordination problems, um, but Back when I was climbing in like freshman or sophomore year of college, that wasn't really a thing. So dinos, was, you know, I never did them. That's basically my experience. Oh, and the type of climbing that I did for like the first four years of climbing were just bouldering because like Bridges was a bouldering only gym. And then once I started climbing over the summer of 2019 in LA, I got a membership at Sender and me and my friend just like learn how to lead climb and we did lead climbing from then on. Let's dive into what climbing is like and why it's different and unique in Korea. A common question that I get is, is there climbing in Korea? And the answer is yes, there is so much climbing in Korea. Like climbing is a really old sport in Korea. My uncle, I, I nev I've never talked to my family members about climbing and one day it just came up and my uncle was like, Oh yeah, I remember those days. I used to do pull-ups on the subway on the way to school. So you would just go up and down Yinzubong and like Pukhansan and all that stuff. And I was just like, you climbed? What the heck? This is so strange. Like we're connecting on something that I would have never guessed that we would connect on. Climbing is huge in Korea. There is a real crazy abundance of climbing gyms. Like it's really dense in Seoul. So most of what I'm talking about is going to be in Seoul. There are still climbing gyms around in the cities around in Korea, like Daejeon, Busan, Daegu, all these places, there's always going to be a climbing gym. But in Seoul, it's just so densely jam-packed with climbing gyms. And I feel like every couple of months, there's a new announcement of another climbing gym opening up somewhere like right next to another climbing gym. So it's just, there's a lot you can choose from. Now the caveat is that they're mostly all bouldering gyms. You have to remember that Seoul is a city and cities 
you know, the real estate is expensive. Usually the real estate that's vertical is very expensive too. So most of the lead climbing gyms, like I only know of one, two, and they're in Incheon, which is a little bit cheaper than Seoul. So it's harder to get out there because it's just farther away. But there are a lot of outdoor walls, like with holds and stuff. And there it's mostly for the spring and summer and fall seasons where you can climb on those. But yeah, it's mostly gonna be bouldering. How much is it to climb in Korea? Climbing in Korea is so cheap, at least coming from the US, but I think it's probably like in proportion to how much climbing is taking into account like living costs and food costs and whatnot. But climbing in Korea was always Imanon. And I think that Imanon, Imanon is like, right now that's $15.34. And that's a day pass. You'll get like your rentals for Icheon, which is probably like a dollar-ish. Most people don't get memberships at gyms. Like I said before, there's such a large number of climbing gyms that it's kind of fun to just hop around. And because the day pass is so cheap, it's possible for you to just gym hop. But if you do end up getting membership, usually they're in intervals of one, three, five months, or one, three, six months. And there isn't gonna be like an initiation fee that's an absurd amount, like $90 or $100 or something like is common in the US. It's just going to be one flat fee and it's pretty cheap as well. I feel like most people just don't do it because it's more fun to try out different gyms, right? And even though it's Imanon, I think that I think that right now some gyms like Toku the Climb is actually changing their price to Iman Ochonon, which is 25,000 one, and that's like 20 bucks. So things are getting a little bit more expensive in response to like economy and you know changing prices in life. <laughs> I don't know the words, <laughs> but it's kind of like how climbing gym day passes here were like $25 and now some places are $30, $35 for a day pass and then an additional $5 for the rentals and it's just really terrible. But this is life. <laughs> Things are getting more expensive. <laughs> so another common question that I get from climber friends who are interested in climbing in Korea is how does grading work? And are climbing gyms harder or easier or whatever in Korea? Um, as far as like harder or easier, there's always going to be that spectrum of easy to hard. So I like if something's easy, then just go harder, you know, like just go up a grade. But on the topic of grades, most Korean gyms do not use grades. They use colors. They have color tapes and then the tapes are all like in order, like stuck up onto the wall somewhere to let you know, like red is the easiest and black is the hardest or something like that. It's not always the same order of colors. Like some gyms will do Roy G Viv and then like black and whatever, but then other gyms will just have a different order and every time you enter a gym, you just have to look at it and be like, oh, okay, that's the grade. If there is grading, it will be V grades. Places like Tokyo will do like a circle of the grades and then show what range of V grade each color will be. Like, oh, this purple, like purple tapes are going to be between V6 to V7 or something like that. So it can give you kind of a reference point, but most people don't pay attention to the grades. They just pay attention to the sticker color of that gym so like so my friends will be like oh yeah no this is kind of like a tokyo red tape or like this one's kind of like a sarsu pura it's because everyone's climbed at all these different gyms you just kind of know oh like a sarsu pura is kind of like a tokyo uh like pura as well okay that was a bad example but <laughs> what's another one? Oh, you can be like oh sarsu pura that's kind of like a wave rock like brown tape you know Let's talk about facilities because whenever I come back to the US, I'm just like, ew. Because the main thing about climbing gyms in Korea is that you take off your shoes before you go in and the ground is usually turf. So it's cleaner because you're not just like walking around with your outside shoes inside. And then if you do need to go outside, like you want to go to the pianijum and like, or like you want to go for a smoke, there are outdoor use slippers that you just, so you don't need to put on your shoes. You just put those slippers on and go outside and do whatever you need to do. And then there's like separate slippers for when you want to go to the bathroom. So the slippers are all just like at the entrance of the entrances of each of these places. That's my favorite thing. You don't wear your shoes inside. It's so much less grimy. <sighs> on the topic of feet, <sighs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> on the topic of feet, there's also commonly foot washing stations. Um, 
that's also another thing that I really liked about climbing gyms in Korea. This emphasis of wanting to be clean, washing your feet after you climb or like washing your hands after you climb. This is just common, like this is what you do. And I really love the foot washing stations. It just keeps everything so clean. I feel like every time I walk around a climbing gym in, in America, if I didn't bring my Birkenstocks, I just feel disgusting and like have to tiptoe around because I don't want to be like mm, on everything. Let's talk about the facilities, like what is usually provided at climbing gyms in Korea. Korean climbing gyms don't usually come with a full gym the way that they do in America. Obviously the price difference can be shown in that. Like most people will have a separate gym membership at a fitness gym and then just go climbing on their in their free time. Whereas in America, a lot of people will just have their gym membership for a climbing gym be the same place that they go through their non-climbing workouts, like um, weight training or like benching or squatting or stuff like that. And like cardio machines, same deal. They just aren't a thing in Korean climbing gyms. Korean climbing gyms are specifically for climbing. So there's going to be like pull-up bars, there's going to be um, hang boards and bands and edges and uh, like the occasional moon board or kilter board but outside of this climbing specific workout equipment, you won't find it. Oh, and another thing that climbing gyms will always provide is tripods. Climbing in Korea is a very, and I'd say this about like basically everything in Korea, Korea is Instagram centric. So a lot of people who start climbing will create their own climbing Instagrams. And I have one too, so if you wanna go follow it, it's this. People will have climbing specific Instagrams and usually they're public and usually they're hashtagged and they want to post the climbs that they sent that day and keep track of how many purples, how many reds that they climbed that day and a lot of people who can't figure out beta will then go into that climbing gym's Instagram like tags or hashtags and then search through to find exactly the problem that they can't figure out and like watch other people's beta and figure it out from that if you know, so enough about facilities, let's talk about the climbing culture. Climbing is something that really exploded in the past couple of years in Korea, especially with the introduction to climbing in the Olympics and how Korean climbers are really just dominating in this field. Climbing is very much a trendy hobby in Korea. And that kind of sounds like a burn or a diss to the the climbers in Korea, but it's it's really not. I mean, that's just how it really is. But I think that this is the case in most climbing gyms, even in America, it's becoming very trendy to go climbing. When you go climbing, most people are not seasoned climbers. You know, you'll just run into one too many beta sprayers. I definitely do experience a lot more beta spraying in Korea than I do in America. But at a certain point, I just kind of got used to it and started being like, why did you do my Like, because me just telling them that will be like, they just kind of get jolted and they're like, oh, Oh, the just and then they just don't. <laughs> so, I think I think that climbing culture that is a thing around the world, like not beta spraying, is not that ingrained in Korea. But I also think that part of that is like a cultural difference. Like everyone takes a lesson when they first start climbing. One because it's cheaper, and two because I think in the culture, doing things correctly is important to improvement. So most people will start off with like a one day class where they'll learn about like, um, I don't know, like your body should be a triangle, you have three points of contact, you have like, you're going to want to swap legs and like push up from your right leg to go to your right hand or something like that. So based on these lessons and based on how people are taught, I think this idea that it's okay to teach others might be instilled in their heads. I'm not really sure, but there is going to be beta spraying. I don't know, a lot of mansplaining. I don't know, it's a patriarchal society. If you didn't experience it, maybe you're a dude. <laughs> a whole different part about climbing in Korea is that there is a concept of crews. Crews are basically a quasi-official club that you join and you pay money to join and it's not a lot of money, but there are chat rooms and like crew Instagrams and hashtags and t-shirts and it's all basically to create camaraderie. And it's really cute, I actually like it. I didn't like it at first because I was like, mm, I wanna be part of a crew and they're being exclusive and this is just so clicky. But I think that's just cause I was nervous. <laughs> People, even if you're in the crew, you will, they will usually talk to you. And if they don't, then that just means they as a person are not that nice. And another nice thing about crews is that after you are finished climbing, it's usual that you will go out and eat with them all and you'll drink with them and you'll just have a good time and you guys just like talk about climbing and you go on trips together. So it's just nice to have this um, 
reliable group of people that you can ask to go climbing with. So now let's talk about the style of problem. Climbing in Korea is very, very flashy and dynamic. It's not always going to be very dynamic, but you can guarantee that there's going to be an interesting move in the problem, like knee bars or drop knees or heel hooks, toe hooks. Um, that you can do dinos, there's going to be slight coordination problems, and it's just a lot of fun, personally. Personally, having come from America where it's very just like, tense, get that next cramp, like get the next cramp. I have a theory that it's because these kind of problems look a lot flashier and cooler on Instagram and I don't know, it just feels more like an achievement if you succeed at doing one of these cl climbs. Either way, it's very fun. I really like the climbing in Korea. This is not to say that there isn't those outdoor style problems, but there's always going to be such a good mixture that like, oh, I, I, like, I don't want to do this dynamic problem. I just want to do this one with, I don't know, a drop knee type of move, then you can't. It's a good variety. Maybe I just haven't climbed in enough gyms here in America, but... No, I feel like I have. I think I'm just a hater and I miss Korea. <laughs> Anyways, that's the type of style that you're gonna most typically see in Korea. Now let's talk about outdoor climbing in Korea. I have not bouldered in Korea outdoors, but I have rope climbed multiple times. So the places I've gone to are Kanhyanam for uh, leaf climbing. I went somewhere else for leaf climbing, but I can't for, or, like remember what the name was. <laughs> and then I went uh, on a multi-pitch climb up Insubong, which is like the really tall peak on Pukansan, <laughs> which is really cool. At least rope climbing, from what I've observed, is pretty dominated half and half by the young people, but also by the old people. Like the old people who I've been doing this since, like the 60s. <laughs> okay, maybe not the 60s the 70s. I don't really know. There's always just like a bunch of old people like lounging around underneath the routes. Like there's this one time at Kanyanam, we bought um, chon and makgeolli and my friend like brought a bunch of extra cups and chopsticks and he was like, do you know why we're doing this? I was like, no, why? And he goes, it's so that we can make an offering to the older, like to the elders. <laughs> and then ask them to set our quick draws for us on our projects because they will flash it immediately while setting gear. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it was true. We were like, please, will you do this for us? And they grumble about how us youngins can't even go up this problem. And then they just flash the 12A. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the heck? So that is what outdoor climbing was like for me in Korea. Like even when we were doing the multi-pitch at Inzubong, my friend's parents took us like his parents and his parents' friends, who are also the parents' age, took us up Inzubong and they were just like so strong and so cool. So I just want to be an old person climbing in Korea. <laughs> Life goals, honestly. This is editing Clara and I don't really, I'm like trying to figure out how to incorporate the tours of all the climbing gyms that I went to into my video. Oh, it's my closet. But I can't like, I'm like not creatively able to figure this out, so I'm just going to dump all of them here now.
that this is me filming inside of F45, but I'm actually at the climbing gym now. I'm extremely red, but let's do the climbing gym tour of Kripak. This is the women's dressing room. Got some showers. It's 10 p.m., so there's no one here. Okay, today's at rock, rock Tree. This is the whole gym. Just kidding. And then you can practice lead climbing here. This is a staff member. He's kind of a weird one. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is the staff room. We can't go inside. This is actually the main area. We've got a little comp wall right here. Got the front desk. The entrance with some holds. And this is the regular wall. It's a pretty small gym, but they just opened up a bigger location in Pundang. Bathrooms are over there. Got a little upstairs area. Got a little training area. Got a little Clara. It's me. <laughs> 제 YouTube 영상에 나올 거예요. 이거 다 모아줘. 난 찍고 있을게. 물. 다쳤어. Stretching area upstairs, I would show you, but I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> 
네. 네. 저 이제 클라이밍은. 얼음진 공사용 갖다 줄까요? 아니에요. 우리 이제 나갈 거예요. 운전할 수 있겠어요? 친구가 할것 같아요. 그쵸. 그냥 좀. 타이밍을 참아야 될것 같아요. 네. 누워서 네. 다리 올리고 아, 네. 5분 10분 찜질 해놓으면 밖에는 딱 가능해요. 오케이. 괜찮아질 거예요. 네. 잠깐 해볼게요. <웃음> <웃음> 감사합니다. 빅 워싱 스테이션. Where are we? Hello. 저기 화장실 마크룸 That is basically everything that I wanted to tell you guys about climbing in Korea. Definitely leave a comment below if you have any questions about climbing in Korea and about like gym recommendations that you want or anything. And go follow my climbing Instagram if you're interested in seeing more content about climbing there. I like to keep it separate, um, probably just to have it that I got into ever since climbing in Korea. And uh, if you're interested in buying this top or any of the other Soulfire tops, it looks like this in the back. It's super cute, it's super soft. I really like it. If you're interested in Soulfire, I also have a discount code. It's Clara. You get 10% off of your purchase. And I think that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for being patient with me. I am, I am dealing with my computer being kind of weak and unable to handle my Busan and Yasu clips for some reason. So that video is just kind of on hold and I had to switch gears and make this climbing related video. And I know that not all of you guys are climbers out there, but I hope that this piques your interest into wanting to try out climbing. It's a lot of fun. It changed my life. I love it. You don't need to be strong. Um, I was a freaking runner with no upper body strength uh, when I first started climbing and look at me now. I could probably beat up any guy. Mostly because it would be a swift kick to the nuts. Thanks for watching! <laughs>